All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Thursday lecture. Um, so we've spent the last couple lectures sort of looking at these algebraic objects that we're calling functions, right, that map between one set and another. Um, and if you remember a little bit before that, we started our course by looking at, you know, different sort of expressions with variables, and then we combined those expressions to make new expressions, right? So the sort of natural question that arises after that right, is now that we have this new algebraic object, these functions, right, how can we combine them in order to get new functions, right? So we're going to talk about something called the algebra of functions, okay? So let's, in, in order to do this, right, we're going to need a, a couple functions. Um, so we'll say let f of x and g of x be functions. With domains, we'll say a and b, right? Where a is the domain of uh, f and b is the domain of g, okay? So now we're going to define a couple of new functions, right? So, um, you know, the sort of traditional operators that we have, right? We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we can define, we'll say we define, so there should be an E in there. And the first one is F plus G of X, right? And what that is, right? In, in order to get the function F plus G, we first take the function value at, of, of F, and then we take the function value of g, and then we add them together, right? So it, it happens just the way you'd think, right? Um, but then what's the domain of this guy, right? So I guess we'll have a column right here for the domain. Well, the addition here is only really possible where this one is defined and where this one is defined, right? So that would tell me that our domain would be the intersection of the domains of our parent functions, right? Because, you know, that's what it means for our x values to be in both of them at the same time. Similarly, we can, you know, say, think about the function f minus g of x. And as you would expect, that would be f of x, g of x, and you simply subtract the two. Same idea on the domain. We have the intersection, right? Because you can only subtract them when they're both defined. Um, for our next one, multiplication, right? So we, we want to multiply f times g at x. Well, I'm sure this is no surprise to you. That's calculated f of x times g of x and has domain a intersect b. The final one um, is division, and it, for the most part, follows uh, the same idea, right? If we're trying to calculate f over g of f, or of x, that's going to be f of x over g of x. And our domain has a slight nuance to it, right? So we're going to have the set of all x's, where x is in a intersect b right, for the same reason as these previous ones, but we also need g of x is not equal to zero, right, because if g of x equals zero, well, then this division is undefined, so we're outside of our domain. Um, this sort of I I idea, right, um, it's kind of very much up in the abstract math land, right, so, so we can bring it down with some examples. So let's say f of x is 1 over x minus 1, and g of x is, I don't know, we'll say 2 times the square root of x, okay? So we'll say part a, find f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, 
and f over g of x, okay? So we'll sort of take these one at a time. So f plus g of x, well, it just involves adding this one to this one. So that that would be 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 times the square root of x. Simple enough. If we were doing this on a homework or, or a quiz, you might want to sort of, you know, get a common denominator here and add them together. But for the sake of, of you know, example like this, we can just leave it like this. Um, next one for f minus g of x. Well, it's going to be the same idea. We're just going to subtract them, right? So that's going to be 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 times the square root of x. For the multiplication, right, f times g of x, we're going to multiply them together. But since we have a 1 up here, that's nice and easy, right? That just comes out to 2 times the square root of x over x minus 1. And finally, for the division, uh, that's going to be, well, we're dividing, right? So it's 1 over x minus 1 divided by t times the square root of x. But we have a denominator in the numerator, so we can drop this down here. So then we get 1 over 2 times the square root of x times x minus 1. Okay? Now for part b, we'll just, I guess, continue it over here. So we'll say calculate or rather evaluate all of the functions in part A at 4. Okay, so what that's saying, right, is if we're doing f plus g of 4, well, that's going to be 1 over 4 minus 1 plus 2 times the square root of 4, which looks to me like 1 third, plus the square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4 again, and 4 plus 1 third is going to be 13 thirds. Our next one, f minus g of 4, is going to be 1 over 4 minus 1, minus 2 times the square root of 4, which is going to be 1 third minus 4, which comes out to negative 11 thirds. f times g at 4, that's going to be 2 times the square root of 4 over 4 minus 1, or 4 thirds. And for our final one, f over g at 4. Well, if we remember our function, it's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 4 times 4 minus 1, which is going to be 1 over 4 times 3, or 1 over 12. Okay, so the algebra of functions, for the most part, just sort of um, formalizes a thing that we've been talking about, or that, 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 that we've been doing sort of naturally with functions for a while. Um, for this idea, there there is a sort of graphical approach um, to it if uh, you, you want that sort of visual component. Um, so I'll throw down a set of axes real quick, just kind of walk you through that. Okay. So say we have some function like this. Going, we'll have it going through the origin, just for niceness sake. Okay. Um, and then, you know, maybe we have a green function that does that, okay? We'll call the green function g of x, and we'll call the purple function f of x, okay? If we're adding these two functions, right, what we do is at every point, we add their outputs, right? So we would take, you know, say this line, Right, this is the height of g of x, and we would add that 
to the height of f of x at that point, right? And then that would give us a point on our new graph, right? Which I guess we'll color this orangish yellow, right? We could take, you know, maybe this point, move it up, go somewhere around there. You know, we could take this point, at, at, at every point, you add the output of one graph to the output of another, and you would get, you know, maybe this orange graph would look something like this. It's going to dip down a little bit and then go up, right? Where this is an approximation of f plus g of x, right? And so... Um, we can we 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 could keep sort of doing this idea for the other ones right you you multiply or or divide at every point um but the addition is a little bit more visually intuitive so we'll sort of leave the graphical approach there um and then move on to our next topic okay so we have looked at the algebra of functions from the like analog of well what did we do with rational expressions or or regular expressions right? how did we combine those to create new expressions but there's one thing that functions have that these expressions didn't right imagine we have some function right um that that has some range right well there should be some other function that has that range as a domain, right? So, so let me let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, g of x is x squared plus one, right? And we'll say f of x is the square root of x, right? So, let's think about the range of this guy, right? So, the range of g, right, is going to be one to infinity, right? This is a subset of the domain of f, right? So, so, so we could sort of think about feeding the whole domain of g into it, right? Which would be the whole real numbers, taking those outputs and then feeding them into f, right? We can sort of form a function by composing them, right? We could do something like, you know, f of g of x, right? Where you feed it an, an x, you do g, and then you do f, right? And then we could, you know, say, call this a new function, right? Define this to be h of x. This idea of the composition of functions is sort of the new piece of algebra that we can do with them in order to combine them. Um, and if you notice with our other ones, right, we, we, we had a way to write, you know, f plus g of f, of, of x, right? And the way that we do that here is we write, um, or we, we rather define, right, the composition to be f circle g of f, of x is f of g of x, okay? Let me draw you a little diagram, you know, to sort of um, get another, like, take at this. Okay, so we have some first domain, right? We're going to have three little amoebas. Um, okay, so let's say we have some point in this first domain, x, right? And we have some function that takes x into the second domain, okay? I guess we'll call this domain A, we'll call this domain B. It maps x to g of x, right? So this is our map g, right? g takes x to, to, to g of x. But what if we have some other function, right? Some, some f that could take this point here, right? f would then take g of x to f of g of x, okay? As we've seen, if b is the range of g, 
and B is also the domain of F, this always works, right? So we can define a new function. I guess I missed that a little bit. We can define this new function like this, right? That's F circle G, right? F composed with G that just takes us straight from the domain A to this domain C, which I forgot to label. Let's do, let's do an example of this to sort of try and nail down what we're talking about, okay? So let's say f of x is the square root of x, and g of x is the square root of 2 minus x, okay? So we want to find and state the domain. of, let's see, let's go f of g, g of f, f of f, and g of g. Okay, we'll start with, with f of g. So f circle g of x is f of g of x, okay, which means that we're doing f of g of x, which is 2 minus x, right? So now everywhere in f that we see an x, we put this expression, which would tell me that we're looking at the square root of x, but x is now being called 2 minus x, okay? Which is the same as the fourth root of 2 minus x. So what's the domain of this new composition, right? Well, the domain of the composition is everywhere that g is defined and g of or f of g of x is defined okay so where is this defined right now that we have an, an explicit formula for it well it's going to be defined when 2 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 right because we can't have negative inputs to an even root so that, that that would mean that x has to be less than or equal to 2. And I suppose I'll put a little box around this guy just to mark our domain. For our next one, we're going to do g of f of x, right? This is g of f of x, which is g of the square root of x, right, because that's what we've defined f as, which means we're doing the square root of 2 minus what we're calling x, which is this now the square root of x, okay? And the first thing to notice here, right, is that f of g and g of f are different, right? So when, when previously we were working with, with, you know, adding things, subtracting things, multiplying them, it didn't matter what order you did them in, right? Um, but here it does, right? G of f is not f of g. So what's the domain now? Okay, well, our domain, both of these radicals need to be defined, right? This square root of x tells me that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, okay? And we also have that 2 minus the square root of x has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means that the square root of x has to be less than or equal to 2, or that x has to be less than or equal to 4. Okay, but both of these need to be, need to hold, right? So that would tell me that our domain, we have the set of all x, where x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 4. Next up, we'll do f composed with f of x, okay? And this is going to be f of f of x, which is just going to be the fourth root of x, and our domain is almost immediate that or all of the x, where x is greater than or equal to 0. 
So that one was a little bit on the easier side. Now we're going to do g of g of x. So that's g of g of x, right? So that's going to be, we, we start writing g, so it's the square root of 2 minus, and then everywhere that we see an x, we should write g again. So the square root of 2 minus the square root of x. For the domain of this, um, I'm actually going to leave that as an exercise for you, um, just to sort of get a little bit of practice with, you know, finding the domain of a nested radical like that. Um, this sort of completes our study of um, compositions, and we're going to kind of pivot a little bit and uh, go back to graphing a bit.